that was a very strong clear image from God telling me that this is where you're meant to be this is where I wanted you this is where you're meant to be at right now um this is the plan that I had for you hey guys and welcome to little black fuck you know what time it is you know my throat is hurting still I was talking to you guys about simply Nikki's uh, video where she talked about her vision pre marrying Jamie um, and did she regret obviously marrying Jamie or and did she see that she was going to be lonely find out um, on our review today um, if you're new to the channel make sure you like share subscribe click on the bell button for the notification of the uploads okay yeah click on that bell button okay don't watch that yeah and if you're new to the channel you can do okay that's it if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for notification of the uploads. For those of you returnees, you got the minerals, you got the minerals. My voice is doing cackly cat. <laughs> you got the minerals, you got the minerals. You got the minerals. All right, listen. Hey, join the mineral gang by clicking on the minerals link down below. But look at the video here. See what kind of stock we've got. Listen, buy one for yourself. Buy one for your brother. Buy one for your sister. Do you understand? Let me know. You understand? I appreciate you guys. Um, as well, guys. Um, as well, if you want one of these hats, please click on the link down below. Use little black button ninety one as a code to get ten percent off. I appreciate you. All right, listen. Let's get into the video. So, um, Nikki, um, or Nikki thought that she. She rightly said on Instagram as her name. Um, they, her son Jamie, divorced quite recently. Um, they were a very big insta, a very big um, a YouTube couple, interracial in Australia. Um, they were really, they were really one of those big couple YouTubes. Okay, um, and obviously recently they got divorced. Um, things haven't been going so well, and she mentioned saying obviously her happiness is paramount. I've never been happier. I've never felt more at peace. I've never felt more joyful. I've never felt more secure or heard or, you know, all of these things. And that's not to paint a negative picture on my ex at all, because I don't want to come on here and, and feel like I'm giving you a reason to attack somebody. Because at the end of the day, you don't know the fact. But in this particular video, she de she details that obviously she had a vision about being in a certain room um, before her, she, she had a vision before she met her ex, um, Jamie, of her being in a certain room. There were certain blinds that were going on, etc., etc. You watched the video here. I didn't think anything of it. Let's say over like a seven year span, I've had this kind of image come in my mind like three or four times. I had zero understanding of it. It made no sense. I'm like, I'm in a marriage. Like, I'm about to have a child. Like. There's no way that I'm going to be by myself. Like, why does this vision keep coming up? Fast forward seven years to where I'm at right now. Um, it's funny, though, because I didn't even think about this when I moved into this house. Um, it never even crossed my mind. But I was laying in bed the other night. It was about 1 a.m. I had my daughters in the bed with me because they still go sleep with me. So Zoe was cuddled up on me. And it was just one of those sleepless nights. I just couldn't sleep. And usually, because um, it's funny because I have the blinds in my room and usually I will close the blinds completely when I go to sleep. But I think that night I was just really tired. And I didn't close them. So they were kind of like a little bit open and I'd never done that before. I saw the moonlight, like I just looked onto the wall and I saw the lines on the wall. As I looked at my daughters, I saw the lines on them. I saw the lines on my face it just kind of reflected as you know moonlight would do it reflected the shadows onto the wall and it wasn't until then that i realized this is the image that i kept seeing for years for seven years this is the image that i kept seeing of me being by myself in a room alone it was dark and the blinds um i think what was really interesting was that one of the things she said was that you know god said that there was no that she um this is, where she, this is where she said, she felt like God said that this is where she's meant to be, you know. After seeing that vision come to life and she was in that room, she now sees this is where God said for her to be. And I want to say this as well, look, um, God, so, look, we go through, I want to make this distinction very clear. We can go through things and God never ordained for us to go through it, okay. Now let me say something, for instance, God never ordained for David to go and take Bathsheba and do what he did. I'm sorry, but he can use it for his advantage. So when things are going bad, it doesn't necessarily always donate that God wanted you to go through it. 
There's some things that are in our control that we didn't have to to do you understand when things are out of our control and they just happen then yeah we can say god god just allowed it like say if your parents passed away there's nothing you can do about it you never there's nothing you could do about it right um but in terms of like going in for a marriage and stuff like that we have control over who we go for am i blaming nikki no um but there is a, an, a, an element of our own action so before we say that god and I'm not talking about, that's, I'm not saying that she said this, by the way. Um, I want to make it very, very clear. And I'm, say that, I'm not saying that she said this. What she said was that God brought her to this point and she knew that God, uh, this is where she's meant to be. So, yes, God showed her something. And one of, one of the things about visions is this. When God shows you a vision, sometimes you can overt it. You can avert it. Um, God can show you something or something that's coming to pass. You saw it in the Bible with Joseph. Okay. It was coming to pass. Regardless of what the brothers did, they were, everything they did was leading to that point. Um, and... Um, you know, they, 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 you know, when God shows us these visions, sometimes he wants us to pray and to bring about a change, right? Um, but in this particular case, she's gone through it and she's now at the other end and she can see that God has um, brought her to this end. And I would say this, that such a scenario lets us know that, listen, God is always in control. God is the master planner. The Bible says that, listen, um, that he um, has plans to bring us to an expected end. And those who love him, um, he has, um, that he organizes our footsteps for those who are, love him, right? So he already knows some of the decisions we're going to make. He knows what we're going to do. He knows where we're going to go. And so he's already pre-planned something ahead of time. Look, he will still warn you, though. Do you know what the beautiful thing about God is? Oh, God is amazing. In the Bible of Adam, in the beginning of Adam and Eve, right? Yes, someone might ask, why did God leave? Listen, we're not going to debate that. What we do know is this. God knew that, 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 God knew that something would happen, but he still gave an instruction. Don't eat the fruit from the tree. And as they did, he still had a provision for them. Yeah? The Bible says that after they did that, after they sowed fig leaves and everything, he cast them out. He actually gave them clothing to wear. Like God already had it in the mind of play that, listen, I'm giving you a plan. This is what I want it to be. Okay, that's my perfect will. You don't meet the perfect will. Okay, cool. I'm going to pre-plan this thing though. So I'm going to give you provision to make it through. Right? And so this is where Nikki is at. And God, I believe that that vision that Nikki had, you know, God is showing her, listen, no matter where you went, no matter what decision you took, because remember, I warned you. If, if she said, I, I, her dream is basically saying, I warned you. But in effect, she didn't see anything. I mean, this is, this is the thing. Her vision actually didn't show that she was in the wrong marriage. It just showed where she would be alone. And I don't know if she said she saw she had kids. Let's say she saw she had kids and was alone, right? Um, that still wouldn't donate that she made a wrong choice in going after Jamie because we don't know. We don't, we don't see that. in a, She never told us in a vision. You know what I'm saying? So we just know that um, she saw herself by herself. You know? And it was almost like a full circle moment because I was like, this is what God was trying to show me. And um, oh, I get really emotional when I talk about it because it's like just the craziest thing. In Australia where we live, there's literally roller blinds on every window. It's very common, especially in a rental. If you go into a rental, they usually would have roller blinds unless it's like an old house. But this is a brand new house with the first people to live in this house. So it was very odd that they put those, um, those vertical blinds into my room. Very old school. They're not easy to use. They're really a hassle um, to put up and down. It's like nobody would in their right mind would choose to have those blinds over just like a regular roller blind and if you've seen my house you've seen that it's very modern every single window in this house has roller blinds except for that one master bedroom i just get emotional thinking about it like oh my gosh to me but to me personally that was <laughs> That was a very strong, clear image from God telling me that this is where you're meant to be. This is where I wanted you. This is where you're meant to be at right now. Again, people wanted to read into it and kind of give her advice. And it's like, look, some things you see are not there to be averted. Some things are just telling you, listen, I'm God and I want to let you know, listen, when you go through this, I'm going to be there. For instance, in the Bible, the um, Bible says that God said to, said to himself, should I tell Abraham what's coming next? Like, should I come and consult him? And then it says he gave Abraham this dream about the fact that his people will be in there for 400 years. Now, what did the people do wrong? Nothing. They just, God was just telling him that this is what's going to happen. So there was going to be an end to this. And God was just showing them, showing Abraham at least 
that hey, there is I'm giving this dark vision about 400 years of slavery that's coming. So I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we cover Nikki and not try to make it as if we should tell Nikki, oh, Nikki, you should have done this, you should have done that. You had a vision, you should have prayed upon it and God would have averted. Listen, some things God has shown you a vision not to change. <laughs> Sometimes God is not giving you a vision to change. Sometimes God is trying to show you a vision so he lets you know, I am still God. You know, and the Bible says he pours out, um, he'll pour out his spirit on young men and young women and will dream dreams and have visions. All right. To let you know that he's still God. Number two, uh, she said, um, she mentioned that, you know what, God, um, that is confident to know that God has her. And I think this is one of the things of why visions are so important. You know, sometimes these visions comfort us and let us know that, hey, the Bible says that the, the Holy Spirit is a comforter and he's the one that's speaking to us. And so this comfort that comes from the fact that she knows that she is where she's meant to be. Maybe her faith wouldn't have been at where it needed, where, maybe her faith wasn't where it needed to be. And maybe she her choices and decisions took her somewhere where it would teach her certain lessons that would take her to where she needed to be. Marriage is slightly different because obviously we have choice when we're making these marriages but again you know um you know the, the the blessing is that this grace of god the grace of god says listen it don't matter what you've done my, my my friend my grace is sufficient you know my grace covers all uh, my love covers all you know love covers a multitude of sins and again i'm not going to say that uh there's a sin or anything but obviously if something breaks down um, it could either be the choice we made or it could be the fact it could have been a good person but there were things that were done in the relationship again that's another thing you must be a good steward like your marriage is not a guarantee. When you get married, it's not a guarantee. So you could you can marry the right person, but you don't steward the relationship very well. Yeah. So this is very important. It's not just attain and you and you finish. It's attain and then maintain. So we again, this is a whole part of it. So she could have married the right person, but hey, maybe it went the wrong way because certain things were done. You know, I remember in myself uh, when I got my uh, a previous girlfriend. God told me specifically when I thought before I said, slow the frick down, son. He told me this is slow down, son. You're rushing. And when you rush, you're going to make a mistake. Slow down, son. I didn't slow down. That took two years of my life. Three even. Right? Took three years of my life and then took a further two because of what I was seeing from God. So I actually took, it actually took five years of my life. Right? But those five years were so critical um, to growth, not only in relationships and understanding people, but also understanding my God. And understanding what faith really is, understanding what believing in God and, and, and hearing from God really is. So although I made a mistake because I didn't slow down, I didn't wait for God to come through. I didn't wait for God's um, a move. Or I didn't adhere to what he was telling me. I knew that, listen, God was telling me not to enter the relationship. I, told, I knew that he was telling me to just be a friend. I knew he was saying that, but I ignored it because I had my own selfish desires. Okay, God said, all right, cool, do your thing in it. But when I, I'm gonna, you're going to learn a lesson through this. When you learn that lesson, it's not going to kill you. I'm going to make sure it's going to make you, right? And so I don't take no credit. Uh, but I do take, um, you know, I do take credit for the fact that I made a bad decision. I didn't adhere to my God. Do you know what I mean? Um, so we can make these decisions um, based on how we feel and what's our own. But there's no guarantee to anything. You know what I mean? Um, there's no guarantee to anything. The way um, life happens, you'd be surprised. Things get thrown at you. You won't be able to. You just can't. You just have to look to God and say, God, help. Help. You know what I mean? Um, you know. going to get a lot of people kind of coming not at me but like saying you know maybe you should go back or maybe you should try and fix things with your ex and you know um look at the bigger picture like because i get those comments a lot um where people don't trust that the decision that i've made for myself and for my children was in our best interest i guess i just wanted to say that before you leave a comment telling a woman to go back to a situation that you know absolutely nothing about. Ask yourself, do I know enough about this situation to encourage that woman to go back to where she was? Do I know the facts? Do I know enough of her story to encourage her to go back to where she was? Because sometimes things look absolutely beautiful to the outside world, but inside it's rotten. She mentioned about obviously people saying go back um, when they know nothing about the relationship. Again, I think many of us have um, our own thoughts and feelings towards the Nikki situation and Jamie situation. I don't really have any because I don't really know them. But it's important to understand, listen, that she's absolutely right. You know, without there being a full knowledge, why are you telling someone to go back? You know, uh, if you don't know anything about the situation, keep quiet. Just watch. Let the person do what they're doing. 
Yeah, no, don't, go, don't go there pretending and say the Lord told me. The Lord never told you nothing. It's your own thoughts and your own feelings that you want to portray on someone else. You're imparting on someone else and you're impacting on someone else. Let them make their decisions. Do you get me? So what you see with Nikki, I understand when she said that, you know. Let her be able to make her decisions. Like Whether it's a wrong or right, let her have the sovereignty to make those decisions. It's between her and her God. Nobody should be telling her to go back. Do you understand? Um, at the end of the day, obviously, she said she's more happier being where she is now. Um, happiness, I want to make this distinction though. Happiness and joy are two different things. I want to make it very, very clear. No one can make you happy forever. They can only make you happy for a time and a season. Joy coming from the Lord though. Joy coming from the Lord. This is why it's very, very important to have a relationship with God because, and I'm not saying that it's impossible to, to have a successful marriage without God. Because we see other people who are not followers of God having successful marriages. What we are saying is that you're, you're putting yourself in a battle when you know your God or you know you have a God and you know there's an enemy trying to break you and you don't want to consult God and do what you're doing. You're asking for trouble. The devil's fighting you because he knows that you have something. The devil doesn't fight those who's already been broken already. He's not trying to fight those. And I say that loosely because the devil still does fight those. <laughs> um, well, I say fight. They can't fight because none of us can fight unless we have the spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? And even then, it's not us fighting. Christ already won the battle. It's about believing. Right? That's what the gospel is about, believing. That's the work of God, believing. That's the work of what God? Believing. Believing in what? What he said to you. Yeah, believing in Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So, back to what Nikki Ting is. You know, uh, none of us should be talking about her situation in terms of going back unless you know the ins and outs. Um, she said, obviously, sometimes things look more perfect on the outset, um, but isn't often the case. And that's absolutely true. Sometimes things look more pretty than they actually are. And they really aren't that pretty. You're just looking at things from a flesh. The Bible says, do not judge by mere appearances. No, but judge righteously. How do we judge righteously? By the spirit and by what? The fruits of them. Not the, not, not, not the good works, but by their fruits. Do you understand? What are they displaying? Are they explaining the endurance? Are they explaining the love? Are they explaining the, the hope? Are they explaining the, the, the what's the other ones patience and kindness are they showing those things if not then really that's how we're judging by it so don't get too excited because you saw them lovey-dovey on the screen there are things that happen behind us like you this stop having relationship goals that are based on people who have normal lives like you they go through arguments they get annoyed they get stressed they don't talk to each other for a little past periods of time they go through these things just like you and me so it's inevitable that we should i mean it's not inevitable it's important we don't make no one our idol no one is our idol. There is no one perfect. No one's our God. No one's got it right all the time, including myself. So I just want to just kind of leave this point as well. Like, you know, with Nikki and Jamie's situation, if they can reconcile, beautiful, we, we appreciate it. If they can't reconcile, we also understand that. Do you know what I mean? That, that the, I used to be a person that would say, listen, if you, get, if you get divorced, you can't marry again. Now, technically by the law, you can't. I mean, you shouldn't because obviously you, you're still married to the first husband. But again, there's grace of God which is um, always running, you know. So if someone marries again, the grace of God is upon her. I didn't understand this at a time. But the grace of God is upon your life. Great God can bless that second marriage because it's the grace of God. Why should I why should I sin but I can't get a blessing I can get blessed a second time round or a third time round or fourth time round or unlimited amount of times but God wouldn't bless but God wouldn't bless a second marriage. That was wrong theology I used to have and I I I I, I distress anybody who followed me if I've said anything like that. I didn't say it in any of my videos but I think at a time, people might have followed me when I was younger, when I was leading some stuff. I might have said that, mm, the second marriage, I don't know if it's blessed. It is blessed. It's still blessed because God's grace covers all. Yeah, I had a very law mentality. Um, and yeah, it was political. Um, so yeah, guys, um, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Uh, click on that bell button for notification of the uploads. And I appreciate you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review as well. Nikki and Jamie as well, I wish you a lot the best. And uh, hopefully by the grace of God, you don't flourish whether it's together or um, by yourselves. But divorce is not a pretty thing. And the kids do um, feel a divorce. But we just pray that the Lord of God will actually, you know, by grace again, be their fathers um, and lead them and guide them and speak into their lives as well. All right. Appreciate you. Say lots of loaded. More love.